Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm Cisco CCNA and CCMP and Palo Alto Certified Instructor. On this video, we are covering PCNSA 210. This is our Chapter 2 Initial Device Configuration. This is the first video of Chapter 2, which is 2.1 Administrative Control. Initial access to the firewall. Palo Alto Network Firewalls, they offer dedicated out-of-band network management, either using Ethernet interface, that is labeled MGT, or using serial console connection, which is labeled console. Now, that's your management interface, Ethernet management interface, or we can connect it through console. Now, if I connect through the management interface, I have to put the PC in there and connect with the Ethernet cable to that management interface port. Now, by default, that port is has gone default IP address 192.168.1.1. That's your default. Now, you have to make sure that this PC has got same IP address, on, well, not same IP address, but on the same subnet. 1.2, for example, it will work. And then as long as you can ping, you'll be fine. Virtual machine series have the manager and port as configured as the DHCP client. And then you have to check from your virtual machine what are the IP address that it's going to issue to the uh, to the net, uh, Palo Alto network firewall? On my virtual machine, which I'm using VM50, I have set an IP address to 192 statically, so 192.168.1.254. The home PC is in the same subnet. I should be able to ping it, and then we can access it. Now, by default, the the firewall has got one single administrative account, both username admin and password admin. And that goes without saying, you have to change them. That's a default, so you have to go and change them. A firewall will not let you forget. So once we log on through the web interface or CLI until it will get, you will get a message, either through the web interface or the command line interface until the default password has been changed. Local administrative password, it is encrypted using the firewall master key. Now there's four ways we can manage or we can have administrative access to the firewall. First, first we can access it through web interface. And that's what we're gonna do the most of the configuration we're gonna do it through web interface. The another way we can access the firewall is using a command line interface through the console port, either through SSH or Telnet. Well, Telnet is not enabled by default because it is unsecure. Only SSH is enabled. Now, coming from Cisco background, I love command line interface. It's so much easier for me to configure. I didn't really like GUI or web interface. But with Palo Alto, you have to, all the configuration we're gonna do through web interface. Not all, I'm gonna show you some commands, but most of the configuration is gonna happen through web interface. Another way we can manage a Palo Alto firewall is through Panorama. Now, Panorama is like a centralized management. If you have, for example, many Palo Alto network firewalls in your network, imagine you have 20, 30, 40, and so on. You don't want to go and manage one by one. You can manage them central from a central location like Panorama and just push the configuration to them. Another way we can man administrative access the Palo Alto network firewall is using REST XML APIs. This is used for if you, for example, export configuration and then you want to import it, make some changes and import them, you can use the XML APIs. This is my lab that I'm going to be working. And well, it's a bit more, it has got more stuff in it. But for the moment, that's all we really need. We're going to need a management interface and we're going to need our PC connected to the virtual machine or the firewall. Now, the VM50 is the firewall that I have downloaded and I've got it running on my machine. Now, this virtual machine has got more interfaces that we're gonna bring them into play later when we do a bit more advanced stuff. But at the moment, we're just gonna do initial configuration. So we're gonna connect to the firewall, to the management interface and configure, basic configuration. I don't want you to rush and think, oh, I wanna do, I wanna do this, 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 this. You have to really slowly understand everything, especially uh, especially for the exam as well. They're gonna come up and ask you questions and so on. So there's no point to jump and say, okay, well, wh what are the policies? What are the NAT policy and everything? We go slowly, right? So once we connect to the firewall, we're gonna get uh, 
security warning. So if, once I connect to the firewall, I will get certificate warning. My PC, well, the firewall is going to issue self-signed certificate and my PC is not going to trust it. So I have to say, okay, well, let's, okay, I can connect to that. And then we're going to be met with different function categories, well, dashboard uh, uh, function category. But anyway, let's go through. So I already have a connection to my uh, firewall. Right, let me just close this and show you first, I'm going to show you in the virtual machine, I already have the firewall running. This is my virtual machine 50, VM50 virtual machine. So from my physical machine, I should be able to ping, which I did earlier and I tested, but I can repeat again. So ping uh, 192.168.1.254 is my firewall address and I'm able to ping. And then I can open like a browser and I can access it. I like to use Google Chrome, but you can use pretty much any browser. You can use Firefox, Internet Explorer and so on. The address that you need to access is a secure HTTP address. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.254. And first, you're not seeing the first window, the, the warning. That you have to access because I already did access it. Maybe if I did, if I do try and access it through Internet Explorer, you can see that window because I want you to actually see the window that you you should you're gonna click next. So HTTPS 192.168.1.254, and you can see in the Explorer it says this site is not secure. The reason is because it is self-signed certificate by the by the firewall so more information go to that website and it says not recommended anyway once we get in there once we add access then the username i'm going to use is admin and the password is admin okay now that we access the palo alto network firewall we can see it's going to start populating the widgets and we see a banner welcoming us Okay, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see it nicely. Close this. The first thing about this um, that you need to remember is that um, these tabs are called functional category tabs. And there's seven of them. So functional category tab. And the network management, it is grouped into different tabs. So when we click on the different tab, we're going to see a different uh, management um, widget. So for example, ACC, we're going, to be doc uh, we're going to be talking about all these tabs anyway, the monitor, policy, object, and so on. If I go back to the dashboard functional category tab, the first thing I want you to look at it is who is logged in? What user is logged in? So admin. And obviously that user I can log out as well. So in that there, we can see when did that user was lost login time as well. Then we can see the task button here. The task button will display what has what is completed and what is actually running at the moment as well. So if I click on there, you'll see what has completed and what is running as well. The next thing is when I make a change on the firewall, by default, those changes, they don't affect, take effect right away. It's not like a Cisco router or um, a firewall. As soon as you make changes, they take effect. In here, no. You ha they will go into something called candidate configuration. And then once you configure, once you press this button here, commit, then those changes will take effect. They will, they will become the running configuration of the firewall. If you, for some reason, you're not sure of something, you can always click on this button here, to help menu, to show, like, a, a, it will open a, a separate web browser. Um, they will have a, a searchable manual to get information about the options shown in the window panel. So we can always click on it and see what happens. It just opens a new, like a website, and it has like a searchable manual. Okay, let me close that. 
Next thing I want to show you is the web interface editing guidance. So let me clear this stuff. And then if I, for example, say that I want to configure something, right? So I'm going to configure NAT policy, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you this. It's not about the NAT later. NAT is comes like a, in the third chapter. But the first thing you want you to notice is this yellow squiggly lines. That means the, there's, there's information that you have to populate it in there. And then, for example, at the moment we are in general tab, and general tab has a yellow highlight. And this yellow highlight, it tells us that this field is required. So if I just hover above it, and it says that this field is, is required. So you do need to write something in there. And unless you populate everything, all the yellow highlights, that so you write something in there, this icon OK button is not ready, or it's not available. So for example, let me write something here. I'm just doesn't matter here and um, you can see when I go in original packet there's another highlighted yellow highlight and it says requires at least one entry I have to add something in there and the destination zone requires an entry as well I have to add something in there and then the OK button is ready so that's to take effect and as you can see when I when I write it OK when I press OK that configuration I did takes effect there and then I have to commit the changes because by default it's not it's not written, right? And uh, let me just delete that. So select it and delete it. Okay. For this lesson, we're gonna leave it here now, right? And we're gonna continue with other lessons. So what we talked about is a functional tabs here. There's seven of them, functional tabs. Who logged in? When was the last time they logged in? The task being completed. Commit icon will be, you see is here is grayed out. There's nothing, there's, there was no changes when I took this screenshot. And help menu as well, we have. And then when we edit something, we you should always pay attention to the red squiggly lines here. That means that some information needs to be filled. So when I click on general, you see the yellow hi highlight there. That means the information has to be filled. All these stuff, you don't have to fill them, even though they are recommended, you should fill them, but you don't have to fill them. And then once you fill them, you press OK. OK will be available. Thank you for watching this lesson 2.1, Administrative Control of Chapter 2, Initial Device Configuration. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye-bye.